It's May 25th. And um, I'm going to go out and try to find City of Pembley Fire because Christine just found it. And this feels like I, I will find it. I will find it. I just came back from giving my dog a walk. I don't care what I look like. I'm going to find it. Target was a bust. The little jerks had it, but they wouldn't sell it to me. We've now spent an hour looking for this book. Tried out our local grocery store. Nope. They even had a sign. I'm so tired. <laughs> God take it anymore. We tried the grocery store. They had a sign that said the City of Heavenly Fire out. Um, May 27th, so that is a no. Woo! -hoo! No, 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 Damn it, it's not here again. Okay, so the hunt for City of Heavenly Fire on Sunday night, uh, fail. It is Monday night. Well, it's technically Tuesday because it's 12.20. I'm going out. I'm getting City of Heavenly Fire. It will be mine. <sighs> mentally, mentally preparing myself. You will be put right there. Day two of looking for City of Heavenly Fire. Um, didn't find it. Oh, I did get something. We went to Walmart. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got Vampire Cat on DVD. Finally, after three days of searching for this book, I just should have just waited until it came out because obviously the where I live it's not the place where they give it out early. Let's go buy this. So I finally have Study of Heavenly Fire. Finally. After, you know, three days of searching for this book, thinking I could find it early like everybody else. I was talking to Christine about this. Like, we're all going to remember this. Everyone who's been involved in this series is all going to remember the day that everyone tried to go out and try to find this book early and then finally it's out and it's in my hands. I started reading this series my freshman year of high school. I remember going to Barnes and no, it was Borders actually. I remember going to Borders and the people there knew me because I was always in there buying books. And you know, it was of course it was after Twilight and I was obsessed with Twilight. I loved reading and then someone suggested that I read City of Bones. Loved it. When bought the second one and the third one wasn't out yet. I can't believe City of Glass was not out yet and I read this series. It was I was fifteen years old and it was two thousand and nine. And it's now May twenty seventh, twenty fourteen. That's five years. The adventures I've gone on for this book, for this series, for this author have been crazy and amazing and I can't believe it all ends with this book right here. But it was really the Mortal Instruments that just kind of solidified my love for reading and my love for books and for series. Cassandra Clare is going to keep writing more Shadowhunter books but the Mortal Instruments will definitely always, always have a huge place in my history. I guess. And I'm sorry if I'm being so sappy right now. And I'm so glad I have booktube and youtube to document this this whole thing. So I'm gonna vlog my experience reading this book. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to film myself reading it, but there will definitely be thoughts and there will definitely be feels. And I hope you guys really enjoy this video. This time I want to thank my readers who have stuck with me through this whole epic roller coaster of a saga. Through cliffhangers and angst and feels, I wouldn't trade you all for the glitter in Magnus' loft. Ugh. I'm on the fourth page and I almost completely forgot, I forgot to put on my playlist. My Mortal Instruments playlist that I've had, literally, I've had, I've made this playlist like 
four years ago. So I've been reading for an hour and I'm so tired. I read the prologue, I'm reading the first chapter. I'm still in the first chapter. I'm on like page 50. The prologue is all about Emma Carstairs and it was so exciting. I love that she threw that knife into Sebastian's chest but that did absolutely nothing. He just like, ouch. I love how like we've already got references back to Infernal Devices with Magnus talking about Tessa and then Isabel referencing her ruby necklace back to Camille. I just finally started chapter four um, of City of Heavenly Fire and there's already been two references back to the Lightwood Eyes and I just, I, I'm literally, I'm like waiting for something to happen because of Christine's video and I just, I want, I want this Crackpot 3 to be really true. Robert Lightwood's eyes are really dark blue, almost black. I mean, they're dark blue, so that, I want this, I want, I want this theory to be true. Keep waiting, keep waiting. I can't tweet about this, so I'm so happy I get to like record my camera like in the process of reading this. And all my friends are in different spots of the book, so I don't want to be spoiled and I don't want to spoil them. It was really cute when Clary went after um, Emma. Jace came in the door and she's like, that's Jace Lightwood. He's famous. Why the heck did they leave Simon in New York? I don't understand this. I knew it was a bad idea when um, they said they were going to do that and now he's just been taken by vampires. He should have gone with Clary because he is, he is bait, basically. Sebastian and the Seely Queen. Weird and kind of gross, but they're taking the London Institute. Guess who is there? Jessamine's there as a ghost. Are we going to see Jessamine? I love how I'm like not wearing any makeup in any of these clips. So I'm on page 200 of City of Heavenly Fire. It's going slow, going slow. The feels are starting right now. Like in the first 100 pages you have to get used to it. You have to like start remembering everything. But then once the story starts coming along, you just get sucked into everything. And everything that comes at you is just so emotional, especially if it's his last book of the series. I've cried once so far and it wasn't because Jordan just died. I guess Jordan's death answers the boyfriend death and the very early main character death, which is really sad, but I kind of knew he was going to die. But what made me cry is when Magnus mentioned Jessamine and how she has been guarding the London Institute for 130 years. Just the feelings, and especially like Clockwork Princess and hearing Tessa's name being thrown around. I know that she's gonna be in the story and it's gonna be so odd and so heartwarming to see her again. I've already gone past the part where um, Brother Zachariah, meaning Jim, um, was drawing a rune on Jace when he was stabbed by Sebastian. Is, is the heavenly fire, is, is that what cures him? I don't know, I'm gonna keep reading. I just finished past page 237 and Jim's back. I, I had a, a good cry um, and it's just, it's not even because, I, I mean, there's like, like happy tears, but it's it's because of all the references back to Will! A Parabatai, like he was, and Jace knew too what that faded rune meant. A Parabatai whose other half was dead. Oh, Will. What else am I gonna cry at? <laughs> I'm not even halfway through the book yet. I'm almost done with City of Heavenly Fire. It's taken me um, six days to read it. I'm at the epilogue. And I didn't vlog from the last time I vlogged. So, let's try to think of the things I needed to talk about. The Seely Queen is a biatch, and I'm so sad that we didn't get to see like exactly what happened to her. Instead of getting justice on the whole like fairy realm, they should have just like thrown the Seely Queen in jail. I think that would have been sufficient and everyone would have gotten it then because she's a bitch and gross and weird and I wonder how that's all gonna play out in the next couple series. This is where I am right now. I'm at the epilogue. I read about like this, these, this many pages 
So I'm trying to remember everything that I forgot to talk about. So basically like halfway through this book, you know, Jace, Clary, and Isabel, and Simon, and Alec, they all went to the demon realm of Edom, and I thought, I, I thought, like, okay, yeah, all right, so they'll find Sebastian, and then they'll come back to, like, Alicante, and, and then they'll have the real battle at, at the city. No, that whole half of the novel was about Edom, including the whole heavenly fire thing, and then Jace and Clary getting it on, and finally, Finally, <laughs> and and then Isabel almost dying, and then Simon. <sighs> I haven't read the epilogue yet, so I'm gonna try to record my my reaction to the epilogue because I got to the end of the book. I'm like, ooh, that's a lot of pages for an epilogue. So I'm just I'm wondering what's gonna happen in that, and um, and then Simon, you know, saving Isabel, and oh, and then Brother Zachariah, and. Mm, and then now we're gonna see Tess in the epilogue and no one okay and no one really died I thought first I thought Isabel was gonna die then I'm like okay well Magnus is gonna die I literally like was crying I'm like don't kill Magnus I thought he was gonna die you know and um nope didn't happen nobody died and except for you know Simon being taken away which I'm sure I'm gonna read in the epilogue he's coming back so Cassie Claire just I just wrote in a beautiful novel that I've cried a lot in where none of my favorite characters have died. And I thank her for that. Because there are certainly very many book series where her character dies Ron Karoff. And I'm always sad. But this, no one, no one died. Except for like, you know, Amatis, Amatis, is that her say name? And Jordan and oh Maya kick-ass Maya what the heck and I, I I was like as soon as Jordan died I'm like okay why are we even like back in New York like why is New York even important wow and Maya kicks butt and oh so awesome seeing her and then I hope her and Bat get together because I think they make a cute couple but I, I just I don't know I the parts I cried at were like the parts when they talked about like Will Herondale that was it. I cried all during those and through Magnus, like, almost giving his life up to his dad, which, by the way, his dad is, uh, Esmodius, which I've, uh, I don't think I've ever heard of him. Is he in the Bible? I think he might be in the Bible, probably. So, yeah, craziness, and, oh, no, the part I cried out probably the worst was when Clary stuck her sword into Sebastian and then he turned back into Jonathan and I was I was like Gazzy why are you making me cry for somebody but it was just it was so sad because we got a glimpse of what he could have been like Clary could have had a brother and Jocelyn could have had her son and it was all because of freaking Valentine and I oh man I just I was crying for Jonathan because he he didn't he never knew. He didn't know what life would be like except for those five minutes where he was in Jocelyn's lap and was saying how light he felt and I was crying for him. But now I'm gonna read the epilogue and I'm gonna see what happens. And I'm so excited for the Dark Artifices. I can't wait. Oh my gosh, the Dark Artifices are just gonna be so good. I'm so excited and I'm just, mmm. <gasps> Instruments, Phase 19 Prospect. Oh, he remembers. I'm on page 699, and I just have to just note something here. Magnus caught Jason Clary kissing by the tree, or I guess kind of against the tree, and he said, Interesting. He said that exact same thing when he caught Tessa and Will in bed at the end of Pauper Princess after, you know, you know. <laughs> It's now pretty late at night and I'm just getting back from a night of the movies and I'm about to finish the last 10 pages of City of Heavenly Fire and I am just kind of a little sad it's over I think I've drawn this out enough it's been a week officially a week today because it's, it's Tuesday now because it's late it's 3 a.m. on Tuesday on June 3rd Tessa, Will. Every time Will is mentioned, I cry. <laughs> You're a heartbreaker. What? 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 
Fairchild and Gray to Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So that means Cassandra Clare had this in her head since the very or she made Tessa's name gray to make it make sense. My mind is blown a little bit right now. Fairchild Gray Frey. Tessa's gonna be in the Dark Artifices. What? What? <gasps> I'm so excited for the Dark Artifices now. <laughs> oh my gosh. And Jem. And Jem's gonna be in it too. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Hmm. I'm sad. Let the morning period begin. I don't even know what to say about this book. I'm just so happy and sad at the same time. What's that thing that Ron says in Prisoner of Azkaban? You're gonna suffer, but you're gonna be happy about it. That's basically what I feel like right now. <laughs> Though it was so good, it was so good and beautiful, and nobody really died, which I'm so happy about. And the only times I really cried was because of Will Herondale. I'm so happy that Jocelyn and Luke are finally married. Finally freaking married. I mean, how long did that take? 20 years? Jace took the Herondale name, and that we got to see Tessa and Clary interact. And then, of course, we have the foreshadowing of Magnus talking about the fair folk. I'm just kind of book drained now. This is, I've never done this. I've never recorded myself of like finishing a book before. Quite crazy how these characters can just stick with you. And I'm so happy that Cassandra Clare decided to continue on this series. I think Sidhu Glass was a great finale we thought but City of Heavenly Fire way better what I got out of this is that just so happy she continued on this series and made it a six book series so that I could stay with these characters for as long as I can I still stand by my Cassandra Clare rant my defense of her I, I see the weavings working I see everything coming together and the next three series coming out they're just gonna be so good and I will be at the bookstore every time a new book comes out she does finales really well and I'm just I just love this world I do by the angel <laughs> look at these books look at them. see these two were already out and actually in paperback when I bought them this one was new, and then all these were new. Oh, I just, please just stay with me forever and ever. Okay guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was surely a ride for me. If you guys have feelings that you want to tell me, please tell me your feelings in the comments down below. And thank you all for watching. I will see you all in the future. Fangirl on everybody, fangirl on. I feel mundane fools is what I am feeling right now about certain fans. So let's get into this. It's, it's recording, Alex.